Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion on serializability. In our previous session, we have discussed about conflict serializability, where we have taken a help of a precedence graph, and we saw that if there is no loops in the graph, then we say that it is conflict serializable, and I can assure a consistent result. What if there is a loop? Then I don't have an answer. I just say that it is not conflict serializable. But even in that case, the uh, schedule may give a consistent result. We don't know. So precedence graph only says that if there is no loop, then it means that it is conflict serializable, and the schedule is consistent. But if there is a loop in the precedence graph, the schedule may or may not be consistent. To figure out this state of the schedule, we use a concept called as view serializability to check the consistent result. Now, what is view serializability? It is a procedure to check if the given schedule is consistent or not. So, it is performed only if the given schedule is not conflict serializable. So, remember, a schedule is said to be view serializable if it is view equivalent. To a serial schedule, that means where no interleaving transactions is possible, given a serial schedule. Like what it basically means that uh, it it doesn't bother actually. See when I talk about this, uh, it doesn't bother about the order. View serializability only talks about the final output. The view serializability means there is an alternate schedule S dash, which is view equivalent to the given schedule S. Now, how do I check or where do I say that it is view equivalent? So now the conditions or the uh, we said it should be in the same sequence. That is what is very important for it. So let us see the two schedules are V view equivalent. If the three things follow, that is initial read, updated read, and final write. Now, what does it mean? Let's try to understand this with through this particular example. Now, see, initial read says the same set of initial reads. That means a read by transaction with no preceding write by another transaction on the same data item. That means the order should be same. See now, I should be able to say this uh, transaction S1 is view equivalent to S2, provided the order of initial reads of object data object A and data object B remains the same. So if you see this, in case of schedule S1, data object A is initially read by transaction T2. Okay, initial read is by T2. Let us try to see here. Though the order has changed, I am getting the same action here. Initial read of data object uh, A in transaction S2 is also T2. Let us try to see it with respect to B. Here initial read before writing of B, I have got here in T1. So in for with respect to this, it is T1. Look at that here. Do I have any write of B? No, I have got read of B. So, it is T1. The second one says updated read. That is basically we will talk about any writes. Actually, it is uh, writes on the data items in between. If transaction TJ reads the result of write by transaction T1, that is TI has written and TJ is read, then even in the next transaction, it should be TJ should read the data written by TI. Now, if you see here, uh, I have got, yeah, this is read of A. After it has written, we are reading it. So, we will just look at, look at that as write operation. So, if you talk about update, we have got write operation of A is done by both T1 and T2, whereas write operation is of B is done only by T1. Look at that here. T1 and T2 and it is T1. Uh, in both the schedule, it is the same. T1 and T2 and it is this. Now, comes to the final write. Final write is 
which transaction updates the data object at the end so maybe in the reverse order you can try to see so here i see write of b that means object b is finally written by transaction t1 that is final write is by t1 with respect to a if we see it's here it is with respect to t2 try to see whether the same thing holds here also we see that yes b is updated by t1 at the end or finally there may be several writes look at this write of a is by t1 also t2 also but after that t1 did not write a so t2 is the final write so here t2 is going to make the final write of this particular transaction so because all these three conditions hold i can say that s1 is view equivalent to s2 this is what happens so if you see here the explanation is given both s1 and s2 had the same initial read which is t2 what we observed here which is t2 okay for object a we are talking s1 and s2 has the same final write that is t2 see final write is by t2 for object a and for intermediate writes so when i say t2 reads the value of a after t1 has written so in s2 if we see here okay let me just take this in s2 if we see we say that t2 reads the value of a after t1 has updated so t1 has updated after that t2 reads okay whereas in this particular transaction i can assume that this t1 has written before because there is no read here i can say that it was read before though it is not actually shown and t2 reads it afterwards so i can just take it in that order so t1 reads what uh, t2 reads a what t1 has written okay so that is how we can consider it so when it comes to b b is read and then written by t1 in both the schedules first read and then written by t1 in both the schedules so considering the above conditions s1 and s2 are view say equivalent we can conclude that it is view equivalent okay another just another example quickly so whether it is view serializable or not how to convert what order we'll see later so you have got the two transactions here read and write on x again read and write on x by second transaction read and write on y and read and write on y now the second serial view serializability what we do is we just interleave or otherwise we just uh, change the order of this we perform we take th these two things up now we see that all the three conditions hold here as what we see is initial read on x is performed by t1 here also it is by t1 then write and read operation if you see whatever has been written here t1 writes and t2 reads here also if we see t1 write which is then read by t2 so that also holds and final write on x is done by final write on x is done by here t2 whereas in this also final write is done by t2 final write on y in this order is done by t2 here also final write is done by t2 so what we see is because all those three conditions hold these two schedules are view serializable okay now what we mainly are concerned is unlike conflict serializability which cares about the order of conflicting operation here we serializability talks only about the final outcome let the transactions be executed in whichever order by interleaving but final output should be the same now let's just take the example here okay now let us initially assume that uh, schedule s1 this is a schedule s1 where first we are performing read of a let assume value of a is 100 then transaction t2 goes with write of a maybe the modification it was supposed to do is a equal to a minus 40 so the value of a is 60 now now here t1 also performs some action which is a equal to a minus 40 so it what value it gets is going to be uh, 40 i mean 
60 minus 40 is going to be 20 and then here transaction T3 is going to perform A minus 20 which is 20 minus 20 is going to be 0. In a view equivalent or uh, what do you say view equivalent schedule, view serializable schedule. Again, I have just interchanged these two things. But what we see is same action is performed. Value of A is red. It is modified. 40 is uh, subtracted and it is going to write that. Then this action T2 is also which has already read is going to perform this action of A minus 40. So value written here is 40 and it is going to minus that which is going to be 20. And again here I have right of A which is going to perform an action 20 minus 20 which is going to be 0. So what we see is final output is the same in both schedule S1 and S2. Hence these are called as view serializable. Now let us look how we can decide and uh, based on of course these conditions tell you that they are view serializable. But when I am converting it what is going to be the order that is also very important. Let us try to see with this example what should be the order of execution of these transactions. Okay? Now, <clears throat> what should be the order? Let us just try to see. Now, look at this example. This schedule, I call it as S. The first condition is I want to check whether it is view serializable. Even more than that, if you want, we can first try to see whether they are conflict schedule, uh, conflict uh, serializable or not. First, let us try to see that okay, quickly. Uh, here I see that there is a read B operation. Do you have a read write B? Yes. So, T2 to T1, there is going to be uh, edge. Then in this, do I have write of B? Yes. So, T2 to T3 also, there is going to be an edge. Then coming to write of A, in T1, I have got T2 to T1, already an edge. Then right of A, I have T2 to T3, already there is an edge, so nothing to worry. Let me see T1. There is read of A and it is read of A here always, so no problem, no issue. There is a read of A here and these are all going to be right, so no issue at all on B, object B. Now right of B, if I take, there is right of B here. So, T1 to T2 also there is going to be an edge. Then there is a right of B here, T1 to T3 also there is going to be an edge. What we see is there is a loop. Whenever there is a loop, this is not conflict serializable. If it is not conflict serializable, next is that I have to check is it view serializable. How do I check? I have to go by these conditions. Now, let me see whether these con three conditions follow or uh, match or not. Let me see the initial read. So, where is an initial read for this? Now, what we see is read. this read operation is done after the write. So, with respect to A, there is no initial read. Let me see B. B initial read is by T2. Okay. B initial read is by T2 done. Uh, C is not there here. Uh, let me come to update. Update, there is a write operation on A by T2. When it comes to B, there is a write on all T1, T2 and T3. Okay. Final write. Final write when you are seeing B finally is written by T3 and A is written by T2. Okay. Now, if at all I am going to talk about the order of execution, when I consider this particular object A, the initial read is not there, but if you see final write is T3, T2. So, whatever may be the starting point, I should know that it should end with T2. Okay. Now, when I talk about schedule B, schedule B, if I see it is going to be T2 is the initial read, T2 is the initial read, I have got final write by T3. So, it should start with T2, 
but end with T3. So in between it can be anything. So I can just say that I have T2 in the middle. Okay. So when I talk about A, I know that it should be through, I mean I just say that it is uh, T2 because here update is there at T2. So final write is also by T2 with respect to A. So for it the order is T2 but when it comes to B, it should start with 2 and end with T3. So that particular thing here says in between there is a transaction T1. So if at all I follow the order T2 followed by T1 followed by T3, it is going to give you a serial equivalent or otherwise I say view equivalent schedule. So all the transactions of T2 or all the actions of T2 is performed first followed by T1 and then I have T3 that means it results in a transaction which I can put it as I just put this up W of B here it will not be there and here I just bring this down okay and this W of A goes here okay W of B goes here. So if I see that this is going to be R of A one by one if you see right and this T2 to T1 of course we can just execute it and see and we realize that there is not going to be any uh, loop in the precedence graph so which says that it can be serializable. So once we convert it is going to be in that way. Okay. Let us try to quickly try to see another example here again if you draw the precedence graph okay 